August 2011 Supreme Military Council meeting was uh, sort of uh, met with uh, joy and you know, happiness on the part of Turkey's liberals uh, because the three uh, commanders, the force commanders and the chief of general staff, they uh, retired in protest of whatever, they, what the government intended to do or whatever, or in protest of something deeper actually. But uh, uh, I am not convinced that the August 2011 YASH meeting is something for us to be celebratory. I, I feel that the whole incident took place among what actors? The president. The president came into the picture. Okay. The president, Kushk, the palace, you know, the place where he lives, was referred to many times. Kushk doesn't want this. Kushk is going to be careful this time. Kushk or the president is not going to sign those appointments and promotions without examining them in detail. So, okay, plenty of reference to, to the president, plenty of reference to the prime minister. The prime minister thinks that way. Prime minister is going to take a lead role, etc. Plenty of references to the chief of general staff and the force commanders. Where was the minister of defense? Not a word. That in itself, I think, shows that Turkey's military is not what it is in other democratic NATO countries in the West, where promotions and appointments are matters to be settled between the hierarchy and the Minister of Defense. So I thought this was very telling, you know, that Turkey actually does not have an operating, an active Ministry of Defense that deals with civil military issues. These issues are uh, supra ministry, supra bureaucracy. Uh, these issues are so vital, appointment of them, so vital that uh, the president of the republic has to have a say in it, or you know, the prime minister has to be included in the picture. Turkish military in some, still in the year 2011, occupies a place within the bureaucracy which is much more privileged, much higher, uh, much more above ministries than the other bureaucratic uh, positions, bureaucratic departments, bureaucratic units in Turkey, like for instance the police, the intelligence agency, or uh, the other uh, agencies you can think of. So that is the first point to note. This is still an extraordinary institution which has special positions, privileges, and special procedure regarding appointments and promotions. What uh, uh, is taking place right now regarding the promotions is that the military decides on, first of all, a certain quota about the generals, about the generals to be had there. Whereas in you know democratic countries in the world, this number of generals, right now I think it's 373, the number is, the quota is decided by the civilian authority. Here they have decided a quota and they have their own military, you know, supreme council, which deals with the issues of, you know, promotion, appointment or extension extension in duty. We'll come to that. Yash, if Ministry of Defense is the first problem, Yash is the second problem in Turkey. Both institutions have been the same, more or less, in the last 10 years. Not much changes have taken place. Supreme Military Command is uh, something that is presented to this government by the 1971 half baked coup. So it's taken the position it has today, it has taken the functions it has today as a result of 1971 half coup. What is it supposed to do? It's supposed to apparently uh, decide. It's a decision-making body on the appointments and the promotions and the dismissals. These three things are within its domain. 
the initial intention for, for creating the Yash was to make it the ultimate decision-making authority for a military which had a political function, you know, safeguarding the country against anti-Kemalist, anti-secular uh, currents and movements. Uh, so this was a body for a political army where three civilians would sit with 15 commanders and share the legitimacy, the responsibility of decision making. In other words, this is a military body, but there are three civilians in it, the Prime Minister, the Ministry of Interior, the Ministry of Defense, who would or who that was the initial so who would just, you know, sign the decisions that came up. Well, why would they sign? Well, because this is decision making is by majority in Yash. Uh, you <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous, it's unbelievable, you know, that the appointed, the 15 appointed, have the power to decide over the three elected, constitutionally elected people. So this is a story that needs to be rewritten, right? it needs to be reorganized, and I think the government has now decided that, yes, something must be done about it. A bit late, but perhaps, but okay. So. Yash is the first fiasco in Turkey. Uh, Yash's decisions are almost automatically endorsed by the Prime Minister, Minister of Defense and the President. And this needs to be reversed. Yash should be kept there. I mean, that's my suggestion. Like all democratically thinking people, Yash should e e e urgently be turned into an advisory body. Completely advisory deciding, preparing lists of promotions of generals and admirals on the basis of their military capacity, military potential, military performance. However, the decision makers should be the civilians, Minister of Defense, the Minister of Defense should sit down and examine those lists, should not necessarily keep the uh, sequence, the order, and should have interviews with the potential generals uh, or the admirals, make up his mind and then refer it to the approval of the prime minister and then to the president. Can you imagine a civilian ministry responsible to the prime minister consisting of uh, high-ranking office of, of officers in such a way as to prevent us from calling a civilian minister. Let me give you an example. The undersecretary is a general. The deputy undersecretaries are general. The department heads are uh, generals. The uh, head of units are completely officers, not generals, but lower rank officers. Is this a civilian ministry? I mean, is, is this possible to civilianize Turkey's um, uh, militarism or military thinking or the hegemony of Turkey's military by, you know, uh, civilianizing Turkey's uh, ministries, bureaucracies, so on and so forth? Uh, it doesn't make sense, does it, to keep the ministry as it is. In fact, it doesn't make sense to make the chief of general staff responsible to the Minister of Defense under the circumstances. I'd rather not, because <laughs> then the manipulation will continue. I mean, it, it just wouldn't make it any, any difference if, if this was achieved today. So this is on the agenda right now. A bit late again. We've been saying these things for the last 10 years or so, but it's better to start from somewhere. Ministry of Defense. Ministry of Defense, if you read Narcis Serra's book on uh, Spain, this, this guy, the former Spanish minister, he's the Spanish Minister of Defense, he's an economy professor, he wrote a book, a wonderful book, which was translated into so many languages, including Turkish. 
where he talks about transition into civilian uh, authority uh, in Spain after the authoritarian uh, rule in the 1970s. And, uh, in this book, I mean, what drew my attention was the extraordinary importance he gave, he attached to the Ministry of Defense in almost doing, achieving uh, civilianization in all aspects of life. He thinks, and I agree with him, that this is the key institution, and it should be the key institution in Turkey, to bring about the democratic control of the armed forces. The Ministry of Defense, he thinks, could be the intellectual, uh, you know, leader of ideas, new ideas in the country, in terms of uh, monitoring change, uh, monitoring change in terms of ideas. It can, you know, work hand in hand with universities, with, with think tanks, about creating a new language about security, a new language about the military, a new position for the civilians to, you know, take an interest in security issues, military issues, strategy issues, so on and so forth, war strategies, for instance. He thinks Ministry of Defense should have key importance in uh, creating a new milieu, a new cultural security community in the country, uh, in, uh, you know, informing them about the issues, in, you know, making, creating panel discussions, and almost like an intellectual institution. So it could be the, of course, a ministry, a political institution, as well as an intellectual institution in creating this new security culture in Turkey. Uh, it could be uh, as elsewhere in Turkey, of course. I agree with him that the importance of this institution comes from the fact that if military resists, well, like every institution whose autonomy is under attack, it's natural to expect some kind of resistance. The authority, the civilian uh, authority that can resist the resistance, in other words, is the appropriate authority is the Ministry of Defense rather than any other institution. So for the Prime Minister to take an interest right at the beginning or right in the middle is not appropriate in the sense that what we're trying to do is to lower, to lower the profile of the military. And lowering the profile means making it responsible, answerable to, being in dialogue with a lower authority than the Prime Minister and the President, and that is the Ministry of 